YouTube. <clears throat> Welcome back to Correctional Officer Stories with Steve. As always, I am your host. And as always, my nose is running like a sieve. It's my allergies. I don't know. I take allergy medication that apparently does not work. So apologies in advance because it runs like crazy and it drives me crazy. Anyhow, thank you for tuning in, all my goon squad. Thank you. I'm here to bring you an update on COVID-19 in the prison facilities in the state of Arizona. Um, been reading some articles. A couple of them are dating back to the middle of December. Um, the Department of Corrections uh, operates 13 facilities in the state of Arizona. Um, and I know that two of them are riddled with COVID, probably all of them. But two of them for sure, I know, well, three, I know Lewis Prison out in Buckeye has quite a few positive inmates. Yuma facility has 655 positive inmates as of middle of December. That's the most known in the state of Arizona. Um, Perryville Prison, where I last worked, um, that was my last stop in the prison system until I moved on and... Um, Went downtown and now I'm at a whole nother agency. Anyway, I know that they're, they've been hammered by the COVID uh, pandemic, plandemic, whatever you guys want to call it. Either way, it's affecting people and it's killing people and it's affecting families. So <clears throat> another thing that I read was 1,066 inmates at Perryville Complex went without running water for... Um, it doesn't say for how long, probably a, a good amount of time if, if the news is covering it. I know that we used to shut their water off if we had a, somebody flooding the run or, or, you know, they were working on it, but that's a lot of inmates to go without running water. That's a lot of inmates that have tested positive for COVID. So as you know, the, the prison facilities are always short staffed. That means that you're going to be even more short staffed because you're going to for sure have positive officers and um, positive staff in general. May that be mental health staff, medical staff, administrative staff. It just depends. Um, but let's talk about <clears throat> COVID and the concern that it's brought to many people around the U.S., right? You know, I've heard a lot of people say pandemic. I've heard a lot of people say this was all orchestrated by the government. Like I just said, whether or not it was or wasn't, it's affecting people tremendously in communities. I mean, just think if you are affected personally by it, whether it affects you, it, you know, it gets into your body and just shuts you down or it kills a family member, a friend, a co-worker. Think how that's going to make you feel. It's going to crush you, whether you, wh whatever your thoughts are about it. It's going to hammer you because it's something that I feel like um, we could have definitely got a handle on sooner than later. Bill Gates has been talking about viruses for a long time and how that's going to destroy the country not modern warfare, right? So it's just super bothersome. And um, <clears throat> it goes right along with the fentanyl outbreak. Fentanyl is huge. Opiates have been huge for a long time. Pharma have been, they've been sued like crazy. But when you have something like that in a prison facility, it puts everybody in danger because officers are outnumbered. All staff are outnumbered. And when you put COVID on top of no running water, you're in trouble. You're going to have some big time problems that escalate really fast. And whether it's in a men's facility or a women's facility, Perry, Perryville is a women's facility, 1,666 inmates outnumber four to five officers on a yard any given day. And that's if you have that many staff on one yard. That's probably way too many. Um, it's usually like two staff to a yard. 
But even if you have to deploy the, the DART team or deploy the t uh, tactical support unit, you're still waiting around and people are still getting injured because just because it's a female facility doesn't mean that assaults don't happen. They get down too. Believe that. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. ADC needs to be addressed. There's been a lot of concerns for a long time. Um, Charles Ryan used to be the director. Before that, it was Shariro. Now you got, I don't even know the guy's name, but he doesn't even have, his background is from like federal corrections. He doesn't have any state um, corrections experience, which I guess it doesn't matter because a lot of it's the same thing. Federal just has a lot more different regulated type things. Um, but I don't know, he's done nothing to really improve anything that I can see. Now, that's just me giving my perspective and complete opinion, right? Because I don't work in it. But I bet you if I worked in it, my opinion would be even worse. Um, you know, the guy dresses up in an in a officer uniform and goes onto the yards and tries to mingle. Get the hell out of here, man. You're a director. Act like one. You don't need to be dressing up in a, in a, in a uniform acting like you, you're trying to fit in. That's, that's weak, in my opinion. You know what I mean? That's not for a director to do, I don't think. You know, disagree with me. Give me a comment. Let me know how you feel about it. But as a director, you should be running the show, making shit happen, making sure your staff and inmates are taken care of, period. And we all know that the mental health and the medical inside a prison facility is not the greatest. There has been several lawsuits come um inside prison facilities i was involved in one when i was out at lewis and um it's just crazy you know a lot of a lot of organizations get involved and they sue because these inmates write to them i'm trying to think of the organization one of the biggest organizations that constantly has lawsuits on the prison facilities i just can't i can't recall right now it's too early but I've got to get a handle on this COVID because now there's a third strain before we know it. There will be a fourth and fifth strain and we'll be shut down again. Everything will be locked down and we'll be bitching and moaning and it'll suck. But I think it needs to happen to stop the spread of this. No matter where it came from, what you think about it, we need to stop the spread because it's spreading like crazy. Everybody thought, yeah, we're now in 2021. Everything's great. No, it's not. It's only getting worse, people. It's only getting worse. Just because there's a vaccine out there doesn't mean a damn thing. It's not stopping people from being infected with this virus and killing them on a daily basis. Here in Arizona on Sunday, we had 15,000 plus cases reported. That is a record. That's crazy. We got to get it under control. So I don't know how that's going to be done, but it's... It's a, uh, it's definitely a nightmare that we want to wake up from and um, we haven't yet. So drop a comment. Let me know um, what you think, you know, working at the prison facility day in and day out. I know it's grueling. I know it's tough. And then when you add multiple things like COVID on top of it to complicate it even more, you're short staffed. You're having issues all day long. People don't want to come to work. It's crazy. So... Like I said, if you're going into corrections because you need a job, not the right job for you because you won't last. I'm telling you, one out of 10 last. And that's that's a generous number. So think about it before you go in. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you tuning in and watching my content. I'll continue to drop more videos. I made a video yesterday. I just didn't upload it. Um, I may or may not. But anyway, have a great day. Drop a like, drop a comment, drop a share. Let me know what type, type of content you want to see going forward. Peace.